All right, in this video, you're gonna to get to meet Riley Adams, a real big league catcher currently with the Nationals and really cool dude. So he just spoke to all the campers at NYBC. Now we're gonna go a little bit more in depth behind the scenes and nerd out on some catching stuff. Beautiful. So why don't you start, I know that you said this a little bit before, but how did you start catching? Cause I think that's a cool story. Yeah, I was a shortstop middle infield. Uh, and were you this tall when you were playing? Not really. Yeah, I was taller, but I wasn't the tallest and I was a little skinnier back then. So yeah. I was a shortstop middle infield and grew up playing that, thinking that's what I would play. And freshman year of high school, I was that way. And I think I partially outgrew the position, but my sophomore year of high school, our high school team didn't have a catcher. So my high school coach approached me and asked me if I wanted to give it a try. And I said, why not? And I fell in love with it ever since. And I certainly wouldn't be in this position I am without it. So yeah, um, that's pretty cool. When you first started to learn to catch, so if you go back to sophomore year of yep. high school, where did you learn how did you learn? What were the biggest challenges that you were facing as you were doing that? Yeah, I think obviously the huge challenge is, is your flexibility and mobility. And I was a little taller, like longer, lengthier guy. And obviously I still am, but just learning to be in the position. I think back when I was in high school, catching on a knee, which is very common now, what you see everyone doing, was certainly not that way. So it was certainly not that style, but I think just getting comfortable in your stance and just being able to be comfortable was probably the, the main thing. And then I was lucky enough, a high school coach who I'll still sometimes talk to here and there, there. He let me call games in high school and learn pitch calling and grow from that was another huge piece. I've always believed that the game management, game calling side is the most important thing to catching. So I would just say, yeah, learning those things early were fun. Learned some lessons. Wasn't always perfect. Had some growing <laughs> pains, but that's part of learning. And I'm glad I was able to do that at a young age. So cool. So I want to touch on what you were talking about with the hierarchy of catching skills really is maybe how we could classify it. The things that I always tell my catchers is practice what happens most. And one thing that I see, because I work with a lot of younger aged kids, they all have awful stances. And one of the things that I say is like a bad stance makes everything harder, a good stance makes everything easier. And then after that, it goes receiving, blocking, throwing. You had the similar philosophy, but instead of stances being your main thing, or your number one, what was it? It's game management, it's game calling, and everything that goes along with that. Understanding your pitchers, understanding a scouting report, understanding how you want to attack hitters, how you want to try to get guys out. When you get to the big league level, you have all the information on guys, more information you really need, but learning that and learning hitters' weaknesses and how you can use your pitcher's strengths to attack their weaknesses, that to me is the most important because that's every single pitch. Calling a game, sometimes I like to say, it's like playing chess and trying to figure out how the winning moves is to me what makes catching so much fun. And I easily think that's the most important. And then, like you said, receiving is easily the next most important and then blocking and throwing after that. So. so there's always all these comments on social media, right, about like catchers shouldn't block from a single knee. This is why we lost the game or whatever. In the big league locker rooms with your catching coach, with other catchers, mm -hmm. what does that conversation actually look like when it comes to blocking from a single knee? Yeah, I've been on teams that, that that are big fans of it, teams that teams that aren't. I think first and foremost, what I'll say on that is that I think everyone who's a catcher has everyone has different body types, and everyone has a different way of feeling comfortable in their stances and position. So first thing I would say is as a catcher, try every single different stance. Try catching on your knee, right knee down, left knee down. If that's not comfortable, then go back to you know being on both feet. There's not one way to catch. There's not one way to do it. And I think that's mainly because we all have different body types. I'm a taller catcher and there's certainly guys that are a little bit shorter or maybe have more mobility or less mobility and it's finding what's comfortable for you. So I, I would just say first and foremost, like learn what's comfortable for you. Try catching on a knee and if you have a hard time blocking from the knee, then Maybe you don't do that when you're in a two strikes or runners on position. So yep. I think a lot of it just depends on each person because everyone's different, but you have to try it to know if, if it's comfortable for you. So I've had many catching coaches in my in my lifetime that have been big proponents of, hey, just try something. If it doesn't work, then move on to something else. But you don't know unless you try. So yeah, try it all. Try catching from the knee, blocking, and see if you can make it work. Because if you can, great. And if you can't, also great. So. Yeah, no worries. I just asked you this before the camera started rolling, but the biggest thing that you're working on yeah. right now, and then what are you actually trying to do mechanically, mentally, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think looking at stats from last year and everything like that, receiving is probably one of the my biggest focus and particularly some of the pitches in the, in the lower part of the zone or the shadow part below the zone. So. I think that's been a been a big focus for me and something to, to work on and I think it starts with positioning and, and where you're at. I think sometimes you, know, you can get stuck in a little too far away from the hitter. Just looking at simple things like that and also just how your glove's moving through the zone. Am I am I getting started a little too early? You know, am I dropping the glove and then it's coming up and then going back down? And just looking at those little details and I think 
going back to like feeling comfortable, finding out what works with my rhythm, my flow, and just, just trying to get that dialed. Yeah, and mechanically, as you're working on maybe reprogramming some of those movements, what are some of the cues that you're really focusing on for that low pitch? I think it's a lot of it comes to just understanding the pitchers, the angle that the ball's coming in at. Because everyone has a different arm slot, everyone's moving at a different speed, and, it, and it's easy just to set up a pitching machine and have that angle coming in, but yeah. but not every pitcher throws at that same angle. So you get good at that angle, but I think it's also important to maybe set up a machine higher up so it's coming a little more downhill if we have a tall pitcher that throws over the top, or maybe even a low pitch to, to get a submarine yeah. sidearm guy or something. What it's all different, I think if anything I've learned so much of receiving is the same way in hitting, you're trying to you're trying to get on plane with the pitch. I think that's the same when it comes to catching. You're trying to get on plane with the, the angle that, that the pitch is coming in at. And that also gives you the most room for air and, and allows you to get the smoothest catch for the umpire. Yeah. Talk through just real quick. I had a really good conversation with Sam Carlson. He was in the Mariners organization, just got picked up as a free agent with the Brewers. But he was talking about what his pregame routine was like yep. and how that meeting went with the catcher beforehand. They would go oh, yeah. over lineup and all that stuff. Talk through maybe what does your pregame yep routine look like both in terms of like drill work that you're doing and then also in terms of like how are you scouting the other yeah. team communicating with your pitcher beforehand yeah no absolutely that's probably the thing I love most about catching that's is cool. the is the game planning is the scouting is looking at video and typically we play three or four game series so every series I like to before the series whether it's the day before the afternoon before the game go in and look at video. I like to look up each hitter in the lineup, look at some of their hot zones, their cold zones, and whatever starting pitcher we have that day, trying to see has this guy faced him, where he had success, where not, and just really look at the video. And we get data, we get reports from, from our staff and some of our coaches and things like that, that that have their video. And so I like to take that and also do my own research myself because I want to make sure that everything works together and the things that I see are the same things that they see. And if there's not, then we'll have a conversation and try to work it out. But yeah, I like to watch video, like to see how guys hit, and I really care a lot about how they've done recently. Hopefully, only their last 100 at bats or so, because it's easy to get see what a guy Over did last year. And, whatever, yeah. um, and obviously, as a hitter, I know that how you feel one day may not be how you feel the next day. So trying to look at how they've been swinging it recently and looking at that. So I like to develop that on myself, and then as a team, we'll have the meetings with our pitching coach and, and all the pitching staff and we'll go through the lineup and that's another opportunity where I can make sure that hey my notes match up with theirs and then about an hour or so before the game that's when I'll meet with, with whoever's the starting pitcher that night and we'll get more specific about exactly how he wants to attack each hitter and how he wants to use his pitches so there's a lot of research you go in before you even have a conversation with the starting pitcher that night and I think pitchers certainly like when you come into the meeting and you have a game plan and you have an idea because they have their own ideas and Again, you're just trying to merge together and you want to make sure that the pitcher feels the most confident. So I'll do that all stuff before the game. And then when I go out to the field, get out to the bullpen, we'll have our catching coach and we'll start with some simple receiving drills, working on some bare hand stuff and then break open the pitching machine. And we try to, as best we can, mimic maybe the off-speed pitch, pitch or like the shape the of, of the guy we got going. Yeah. So righty, lefty, slider, curveball, whatever. Give myself the best chance at just seeing that, getting the feel for that. And so start out with some simple receiving drills, then, then make our way into blocking and, and throwing drills. And I usually like to knock those out before I long toss with our catching coach. And then I'm ready after we're long tossing to warm up our start in the bullpen. Yeah, we get to the field. We got a seven o'clock game. We're probably getting to the field about one o'clock. And we got plenty of stuff to do beforehand, especially as a catcher, to, yeah. to make sure that you're you're ready and you're prepared. And I've always said I never want the reason that you may not have success on the field to be because you're not prepared. If, if I'm ever not going to have success, I want it to be because I just got beat and the pitcher or whoever was better than me that day, but I'll never let it be for a lack of preparation. And to me, if that doesn't require any skill, it doesn't require anything, it just requires effort and making sure you're ready. It's cool. And you said your favorite drill was what? My favorite drill, when it came to like blocking specifically, my favorite drill is just getting a breaking ball on the machine and playing a game with whoever our coach or whoever's feeding the balls of mixing up the heights whether it be in the air or in the dirt and him trying to trick me and, and get me to mess up but it also creates the most game-like yep. blocking scenario and I think blocking is really easy when you know the ball's going to block in the same spot but it becomes fun and tricky when you don't know exactly when and, uh, obviously in a game you never know when a guy's going to be in the dirt you can anticipate it but you never know exactly so yeah just cranking up the machine and either making it a block or receive and and then you can take that a step further and 
you can have the coach tell you when if there's a runner and you can yell runner and then you gotta get ready to throw and so then it gets you ready for everything and to me uh, I want to create my drill work to be the most game like and I also want it to be more challenging than, yeah. than maybe like in a game because then once the game comes it becomes reactionary and I think that makes the game feel easier and yeah. you feel like you can slow down a little bit so to me those drills are huge. I love that and one thing that I want to say for maybe some of the younger catchers watching this is like understand where he's at compared to where you're at, right? He's a big leaguer, and, and you're likely not. Maybe there are some big leaguers that are watching this, but I like to think that there's five levels of skill development when it comes to catching. And the first thing that you gotta learn is you gotta learn how to move, because like a lot of the kids that I'll work with, they never blocked before. And so if you try to throw a ball at them before they learn the proper movement, yep. they, they go like this, they're like, blocking sucks. It's like, well, it's easy, yeah. It's easy to get scared. It's easy to flinch. I've seen that many times of younger catching and still to this day when I do blocking progressions, I, I like to start in that finished blocking yep. stance and I just like whoever's working just with me to just throw the ball and, and just feel that I can get comfortable. You always hear about exhaling when the ball hits you and obviously that's really important but it's just about being relaxed and not tensing up. I think too when catching becomes reactionary it's easier to be relaxed rather than anticipating and then you get a little tense and you get tight and the timing's all off and yeah it all it all starts with just being relaxed and understanding that the ball's not going to hurt and you're going to get a few nicks and bruises here and there as a catcher but that's part of the life of a catcher and it is what you signed up for and to me I think being a catcher is a special position. Personally, I believe it's the best position on the field, and I think it's also the most important. So it's a fun place to be, and I certainly wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah, so good. And so real quick for the kids, right? Learn how to move, and then you add in a ball, and it's all just a progression. You just continue to climb the ladder. Normally when we add in the ball, you revert back to whatever movement you were doing before. So then you have to oscillate back and forth until you can move correctly with the ball. Then you make it harder, which is the progression that he's talking about of going from the stance to the three-quarter stance, to the half stance, and then the full stance. And then his favorite drill, this is why it's his favorite, and maybe not your favorite yet, is now you have to decide. and. Here's the thing, he's great at moving. He moves really well. He can block it every time almost perfectly because he's done it probably hundreds of thousands more times than you. And now what he needs more work on is the decision making specifically from different slots of different arms and different pitch shapes. That's why that's his favorite drill. It's still a great drill for you, but if you don't know how to move correctly yet, you need to focus on that. And if you can't move correctly with the ball, then you need to focus on that. And so understanding where you are is really important. So. Learn to move, add a ball, increase the variables, make it harder, sharpen your decision making. And then the last one that I like to think about is let it eat. Once you get to the game, throw it all out the window and just go be present on that pitch right there. So last question, have you ever heard of the inversion principle before? No. So the inversion principle is instead of thinking about the best way to do something, think about the worst way to do it and then do the opposite. Okay. And so like, when you think about that for catching, if you were to destroy your career or if you were to give advice to a catcher that would ruin them, what would be maybe like the two or three things that like, if you do this, you will be a bad catcher. Well, if you don't catch a ball, you're a bad catcher, okay, I would catch. say. It's been the job title, you, you are a catcher, so yep. you better catch the ball. Yep. <laughs> would probably be the biggest one. But, but yeah, I think I mean, at least that's where I'd start. Yeah. I don't know, that's, a, that's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one on the spot, but you can see how it would work. Well, if you don't catch the ball, then yeah, you're gonna yeah. fail. So then you just flip that and you're like, okay, we need to catch the ball every time. That starts you on the path of like what good would look like. So yeah, well, let's give you a little easier one. What's your number one tip for any young catcher out there? I think we've said it a little bit, and I know you've said it, but like, I think the most important thing is being comfortable back there and in every facet, whether it be when I was teaching catching, especially before guys are getting down on a knee, like you need to be able to be comfortable in your primary stance. And whether that be being able to watch some TV and in a stance, I've always said that like, I've heard stories of Buster Posey when he in college was switching to be a catcher. He would get in his blocking stance and just sit in his living room and watch TV because you know he wanted to get comfortable there and yeah. get used to it. So I think being comfortable back there is the most important thing because especially as a pitcher, nobody wants to throw to a catcher that doesn't even look like they're comfortable in their own spot. It makes it tense for that and also be there for your pitchers. Your job is to make your pitcher look good and you're working with the pitcher to get these guys out. So whether it be catching as many bullpens as you can for those guys or talking to them as much as you can off the field, but just making sure you're there for your pitchers and you're working hard for them. That's awesome. Thank you, Riley. Yeah, thank best, you. Best Appreciate of luck this yeah. year, man. And thank you. I bet that you'll have a bunch of new fans that are rooting <laughs> for you now. So. I love it. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Yeah, absolutely.